Good morning. Uh, thank you. Day late. I'm 50 now. How's everybody doing? Great. I was just I was telling my family last night, I told several folks, you know, the only uh, birthday that I ever really cared about was turning 16 because I got to drive. I mean, that one meant a lot. So I told my wife, you know, because people say, have your birthdays bothered you? And like, no, I really don't even think about them. Uh, in fact, having a party is so against my nature. But the staff said, we want to do that. And I'm like, I'd rather go to the mountains and be alone. So they said, let's do this. And so I'm going to come and we're having a party. And they're twisting my arm. And I, I, when I found out about it, I told my wife, I said, what happened to my request was to go to the mountains and be alone? And she goes, well, then not going to happen. I talked to the staff and OK. Um, <laughs> So I've decided the only other birthday is going to bother me. The only one that's going to bother me is the last year that I get to drive and they take my license away. <laughs> you know, all has to deal with that independence thing. Well, this is thank you for joining us so much on this Memorial Day weekend. Um, gang, I know a lot of folks are out of town and a lot of our regulars are joining us on our online church uh, because you are traveling this weekend and that's great. A uh, lot been going on this week. A lot of graduates around here, high school, college graduates. Congratulations to you guys. You are awesome. <laughs> Starting a new path in life. It's so exciting. And uh, then also this is Memorial Day weekend. And we just want to thank and honor those who have given their lives so that we can have our freedom. And even the, the very topic I'm talking about this week. Um, and for you who, as family members who have lost loved ones, as they gave their lives in service. We're grateful and uh, we're sorry for your loss and so grateful for that. Um, and we're going to celebrate that a little bit more toward the end of the service. But I, I have a big announcement I need to make this week. Uh, would you guys rather, about campus pastors, would you rather me wait till the end or do it now? No, no I should do it like, like American Idol, you know, after the break we'll come back and shouldn't I do that? No, I'm going to do it now. Uh, first of all, I want to turn on the, bring up the, uh, a couple guys real quick. If you guys would come up. And I want to go to Skype real quick. And we're going to go join the Twin Peaks campus right now. And this is Phil Tom Thompson over there. If you guys know Phil, I know Twin Peaks. You guys know him. He's been serving as our interim campus pastor. Phil, how are you doing? Jeff, I am doing great. How about you? Man, you look good. You know what I like about doing this, Phil, is it's the only time that somebody else's lips don't match their talk. You kind of look like a Japanese thing going on there. You know the... Godzilla movies or whatever. Hey, Phil, I am so grateful for all you've done. You have served here at Alive uh, over the years as a, uh, the executive pastor. You went off to Kansas pastor. Then you have come back here, and now you're serving as our uh, interim pastor there. But you also served as the online campus pastor. And we're going to move you back to that seat. Uh, well, you, told me, you told me this week you felt like it was a really good fit for you. Yeah, but you know, I'm having some second thoughts, Jeff, because here at uh, Twin Peaks, they're offering me free coffee to stay here. Okay, those of you on our online campus, will you send <laughs> Phil a free coffee coupon every week? I got a That'll big work. yes, so there you go. Yeah, no, Phil, tell us why you feel like that's such a good fit for you. I sure feel that as I've been praying. I feel like it's a great fit for you for our online campus, and I know you've done a great job with it. Well, uh, to be honest, uh, it is a good fit. I think it's a good fit. All the changes that we're making are really good fits, but I, I do have a degree in broadcasting, and, uh, and, and besides working for a live church, I also work for Streaming Church TV, which is a, uh, a company started by Steve Lacey, our very own Steve Lacey, and we help churches all over the world get online and broadcast online. And so it's a really good fit because that's what I do a lot of besides working at a live church as a pastor. And uh, so it, it, it's really a, a good match. And uh, I'm excited about coming back to the church online deal and, and uh, the people working there. But I will say this, I am going to miss the folks here at Twin Peaks. Well, thanks, Phil, for serving over there. And uh, next week, you'll actually be back in the seat doing the online campus. And those of you at Twin Peaks, you'll want to give him a hug and uh, you know, shake his hand, tell him thank you and all that. Um, we're so excited. Thanks again, Phil, for doing that. I'm excited to have you back in that seat and uh, looking forward to building this campus. And if you don't know this, we have several hundred people who regularly join our online campus. Some of weekends, usually weekends like this, it's higher because we have people traveling. Uh, but last week we baptized somebody from that campus. And we also, uh, we um, have people get saved every week almost on that campus. So, Phil, thanks for taking that. Now, those of you at Twin Peaks, you're wondering who is going to become your permanent campus pastor. Uh, well, I'll tell you that at the end of the service. 
<laughs> I just, I'd love to do that. I should. No, uh, I, I wanna, I'm so grateful Phil's on the team, and I love the team. This is, I, this is, God has blessed me with such a great team to work with. This is Jason Marsden. He has also served as executive pastor. The, the three guys I'm introducing to you to, today have been responsible for getting us to this, this place behind the scenes. They've really made things happen over the years. They're all ordained pastors. But Jason Marsden has prayerfully decided that uh, I've asked him to take the, the Twin Peaks campus. He's going to be joining you guys, he and his family. As of next week, you're going to be their campus pastor. Yeah, and I'm so excited about it as well. Um, that community over there, um, I know a lot of the people at both campuses, so it's a good fit. But uh, we actually live closer over there, and I was part of the planning stages for that campus. And, um, you know, there's 5,000 rooftops within a five-mile radius of that campus. So there's a li lot of lives to touch over there. Um, you know, we're all about leading people who are far from God to be followers of Jesus. And uh, those of you at Twin Peaks have got friends, family in the neighborhood. Um, you know, let's reach out and, uh, and touch their lives and, uh, and get them on board. And we're so grateful for those of you over at Twin Peaks that have stuck with us here as we're going through this transition. Uh, I feel like Jason, as I've been praying, he's such a good fit. I know it's a big deal for your family because your kids, all their friends have kind of been on this campus. This is where you've been hanging out. Big change. But I want to encourage you folks over at uh, Twin Peaks to rally around Jason, support him. Uh, his family's going to be moving over there and helping out. And we are going to reach that community. We're going to reach the Continental Ranch community. God's called us to do that. We're committed to doing that. And uh, Jason... I'm just thrilled. I, I love working with you. I love working with Phil and Mike. You guys, this is a great team. This is like the three amigos, these three. I think I'll have some <laughs> yeah. fun with that over the coming years here, dealing with them. A lot of you guys, you haven't seen them because they have worked with me for years, but it's been behind the scenes and helping all the other campus pastors succeed. Now it's time for them to step out. I, I'm so grateful. Looking forward to what we're going to do at uh, Continental Ranch. Thanks. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I'm, I'm excited too. I love these guys. I mean, Phil, I was telling the campus last service over there just how great it is to work with this team. So Jason is our voice of reason around here. And I know you, you may say, well, he doesn't sound real excited right now. Well, give him a break. <laughs> we sent him to Haiti this week. He yeah. flew in late last night. Uh, he kind of been connecting, uh, been responsible for missions around here, and uh, just got back from Haiti. We'll catch up with all that later. This is right? Five hours of sleep excited right now. This is it. Yeah, okay. So, Wait yeah. till we get you over there drinking all that ca uh, caffeine. Oh, yeah, caffeine. Yeah. Free so coffee. this campus, I know you guys have been wondering too what's going on here. The campus pastors, they really make pastoral care happen and organize all the teams behind the scenes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Mike Gray, he has served, I see everybody served as executive pastor that's moving into this position. That's really interesting. Um, so Mike, now I'm a good friend as well and I love serving with you, Mike. You are stepping into this role. You've kind of been doing a little bit behind the scenes, but you're going to take this campus as of next week. Actually, as of this moment, you are responsible for this building and this group of people. Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Mike, uh, one of the things I was so struck by this week uh, when we were meeting with the elders and the trustees, they asked you about your calling as a pastor and whether or not to be a campus pastor. And your response was actually from my message last week. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, that really, uh, that really uh, hit home for me. I'm all in, and uh, anything short of sin, I'm all in to do whatever you guys need. So I'm here for you. I'm available for you. Uh, let's uh, lock arms and get this thing done. Your background, Mike, you went to Bible college. Uh, actually, we uh, kind of crossed paths there because uh, I live in Colorado Springs. You went to Bible college in Colorado Springs. I did. I yeah. did. And... See where it ended up, and uh, I went to work for a corporation for a lot of years, and did a lot in the business world, and still ended up here with you guys. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's now, exciting. For this crowd, you guys don't know this, but he used to hang out with my younger sister in Texas. I didn't know this uh, back before he was a, really a follower of Christ days. Um, he walked into the high school over here one day, uh, and he said, man, I know this guy. I'm teaching. He goes, I know this guy. And finally, we made the connection. We'd had a mutual friend who was my guitar player back then. And yeah. it's been fun to reconnect. Yeah. And here we are serving in ministry. I don't, how long have we been working together? Five years? Six? Seven? <laughs> long time. Uh, seven. seven. Seven years. years. Yeah. yeah. You're getting old, dude. Yeah, you're getting old. Yeah. Hey, you said we were the three amigos. In staff meeting, you say the three stooges. <laughs> three amigos, el guapo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. You're awesome. 
Hey, I want to, I'm so excited. This is like new and improved going forward. Behind the scenes, we've made some changes that I've been hoping to make for the last few years. And this, this uh, transition gave me a chance to do that with new uh, kind of systems of how we do things. I'm excited for these guys to take us forward. It's all about us living out our vision of leading people who are far from God to be followers of Jesus who are leading people who are far from God. So these guys are going to take us forward. They bleed the DNA of that, uh, that whole vision and if you've missed out on what's going on around here, if you weren't here last weekend, I want you to just see a quick video. Last weekend, my teaching was entitled 106. By Sunday morning, it was 107. And we're talking about this year alone, 107 people through this ministry, through Alive, here at Alive, have made a decision to follow Christ. That's what these guys are all about and turning them into disciples. So last week, you heard a little bit of a story from Nancy. I want you to hear just a smaller piece today and see her get baptized. Watch this. helps the next steps that a live church offers um, to explain what's what to expect what to study what you need you know what would help you guide you where you need to be um, it really lets you know you're not alone um, so discovering live was awesome for me <laughs> foundations really set it forth discover really let me know why I should be baptized and help me make that decision to be baptized the discover class this is such an important part of what we do here. This is a picture of seeing a life transform. The Bible says that when we're baptized, that we are literally putting on the clothes of Jesus Christ. And uh, it is a picture of that transformation of the death and burial and the resurrection of Christ. And Nancy, we're going to do it with you today. The good news is I'm not going to hold you under for three days like Jesus was in the tomb. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and hold your nose, and we are going to celebrate. Guys, you are welcome to clap and celebrate afterwards, because this is good stuff. She's a part of the family, growing and maturing. Nancy, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Rise up to newness of life. <laughs> You're awesome. That's great. I'm praying by the end of the year that that number is 250 that we have uh, uh, led to Christ and a big portion of them being baptized. Isn't that great stuff, fun, guys? That's what we're all about. Yeah. And so with uh, our new campus pastor moves, we are just looking forward to really uh, kicking into gear and doing that even in a greater way, them leading you as the different groups. Uh, thank you guys for serving in that way. So let's jump into this series. I'm starting a new series, new teaching today, and we're calling it How to Be Rich. A lot of people have said, Jeff, I can't wait to hear the series How to Get Rich. I said, no, that's not what I'm teaching. It's how to be. Everybody say be rich. Be rich. I'm talking about how to be faithful when God has blessed us. Now, how many of you, if you were honest, when you were growing up, you said, I want to grow up and be rich? Raise your hands. Yeah. So, you know, I wanted to be a millionaire by the time I was 50. So I told everybody yesterday, I said, I am now starting to work on my second million. I gave up on my first million. As of yesterday, <laughs> I'm just going to go start right into working on the second. Let me ask you a question here. Uh, get out your phones, text me, Twitter me, Facebook me. You can type it in the chat room and the guys will forward it to me, those of you on our uh, online campus. But what would you say, I don't want to know what your salary is, but what would you say your annual salary needs to be so that you could feel rich? As an American, what would you say? If I made this much, then I think I would be rich. I want you to text me and let's have some fun with that. So we're going to look at what the Bible says about how to be rich and honor God. How can we honor God? You see, in the Bible, there are certain verses that are written just to rich people. And what I've discovered in my life is I read mo most of those verses. I'm going, well, this doesn't apply to me. And I've never studied those verses. This week, I started doing a little digging and I found out there are 130 passages, more than that, that are written just to rich people. And most of those verses, I skip. Because, I, I mean, I grew up in a place that we, we said we were so poor that we were poor. We couldn't afford the last O&R, you know what I mean? We were poor. And, and so I, I've just skipped those verses. And most American churches do. Because when we think about rich people, we think like Bill Gates. Uh, we think of people that are really, really rich. If you have your Bibles, turn to me First Timothy 6, 17 and 19. And I'm going to read these few verses. We're going to just walk line upon line, verse by verse, over the next four weeks through these verses. Today, we'll get through the first line. But let's, let me read all of them together so we can see where we're going. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Would you all agree with that? Their trust should be in God. Everybody say, my trust needs to be in God. Who richly gives us all we need for our enjoy enjoyment. Verse 18, tell them to use their money to do good. Sounds reasonable, doesn't it? They should be rich in good works, 
generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. Verse 19, by doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. Now, I put it in your notes. It's on the screen. Let's read it together. 1 Timothy 6, 17. This is all we're going to look at today. Teach those. Let's read out loud together all of our campuses. Teach those who are rich in this world. Well, who's rich? Some of you are going, oh, no, this series doesn't even apply to me. I'm going to take a few weeks off. Let me challenge you in that for just a moment. Watch this. So this raises an important question, what is rich? And the answer is, rich is a moving target. What you thought was rich years ago may not be rich today. For example, when I was making $24,000 a year as a pastor, I had a friend who was making $40,000 a year, and I thought to myself, this dude is rich. I distinctly remember telling Amy, if we could ever make $40,000 a year, We'd be rich. We'd never need anything more as long as we live. We'd be rich. Then we had six kids. And what happened? Rich moved. Rich is a moving target. Gallup did an interesting survey, and he wanted to find out what Americans thought they would need to make a year to be rich. When he asked people making $30,000 a year or less, how much would you need to make a year to be rich? The average answer was $74,000 a year. If we could just make this much a year, then we would be rich. And yet, some of you make $74,000 a year, and you don't feel rich at all. And yet, those who make $30,000 a year look at you and say, you're rich, but you don't feel rich because rich is a moving target. He asked people making around $50,000 a year, how much would you need a year to feel rich? And the most common response was $100,000 a year. A lot of you might have a combined household income of $100,000 a year, and you might say, I've got news for you that's not rich with taxes and, and a mortgage and kids in college and braces and activities and car insurance. $100,000 a year doesn't go that far. They look at you and say, you're rich, but you would say, I don't feel rich. Why? Because rich is a moving target. Someone did a study of the top income earners in our country to find out how much they would need in assets to feel rich. And the most common response was, if we had $5 million in assets, we'd be rich. And our response is, well, I guess so. So you could ask the guy who only has $2 million, are you rich? And he might say, no, I'm not rich. If I had more, I would feel rich. Why? Because rich is a moving target. The challenge is, if we don't feel rich, then we'll never learn how to act rich. So we'll continue to try to get rich, and you won't recognize that you already are rich, and so you'll never learn how to be rich. In this series, we're going to learn how to be rich. So what's rich? How to be rich? What, with, how, do, how do we know that? Where is that line in your life? So, so many of you crossed that line already and you don't even know it. Now today I have good news and bad news. Which do you want first? Sorry, my notes start with the good news. So that's where we're going to start, okay? <laughs> I just gave you a chance. All three services wanted the bad news first. I don't know what that is. I'm going to come up with a series of it. Here's the good news. The good news is you are rich. Everybody say, I'm rich. I'm rich. Some of you said that with a little less passion than, than you're saying, I really don't feel rich. But we, if you're listening to my voice, we have tons of rich people activities that we're a part of. Some of your kids are in soccer. Uh, they're, they're, they take piano lessons. Uh, and you, you're stressed about how to pay for that, but you realize that stress is a rich person's opportunity. It's a rich person's stress. We have transportation. Most of you got here in a car or a truck, or if you're really cool, you got here in a Jeep, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but the, you realize that's a rich person's uh, way of living. Only 3% of the world's population has a car of any kind, 3%. And it's amazing how many Americans have more than one, right? I mean, in our house, there's three of them sitting down. We got a, a daughter who has one, and my wife has one. I have one. And we really skew those numbers even, all of us. Uh, we, we, um, 
We need to learn how to use the resources that God has given us to make a difference. I know right now, I mean, summer's kicking in, just finished graduation. A lot of us are thinking about vacations. You know, we're, we're trying to figure out what to do with the time that our companies pay us not to work. That's a rich person's problem. You, you know that, right? I mean, then we have this time that they're paying us not to work, which most of the world will go, man, I, I, how do you do that deal? That's amazing. But then we stress out because we're, we got to figure out, you know, how to get plane tickets or get gas in our car, rent a car and drive this and where we're going to stay, pick hotel rooms. And it stresses us out because we have to take time to go play and get paid and not work. That's a rich person's problem. With me? Yeah, some of you. I know. Hey, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to be honest with you. This series, I didn't want to teach this series. I absolutely didn't. I, I, up until even this last week, I've been working on this for a couple months. And I got to last week and I'm like, God, I do not want it because it's so convicting to me. Because I skip over these verses. I've never read, these verses never applied to my life. And now I realize they apply to us. If you're listening to my voice, you're an American. Now, I, I do want to say this. I want to acknowledge some of you are in a crisis right now financially, and I get that. And I'm sorry you're going through that. But for most of us as Americans, we're rich. Most of you listening to my voice, you are in the top 3 to 4% earners in the world. If you live here in Oro Valley... Most of you are in the top 1% earners, earners in the world. It's amazing. I even wanted to get out of the series so bad that I went back and looked at the word where Paul said uh, to Timothy, teach those who are rich in this world. I thought, surely, because I've been to third world countries, I come back and I go, yeah, but it's according to where I live. So I started looking at that word and saying, well, surely Paul's talking about according to our own community. And he's not. It's the same word as for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He says, Talk to those who are rich in the world economy. I'm like, oh. Look at Ecclesiastes 5.19. Some of you are great and enjoying your resources, and we need to be. This is not a series to make us feel guilty, okay? Everybody say no guilt. No guilt. It's not about that. This is about responsibility and enjoying what God has given us. Ecclesiastes 5.19. It's a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it. That's good, isn't it? Read it with me, all that together. Again, that verse. It is a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it. To enjoy your work, accept your lot in life. This is indeed a what? It's a gift from God. We need to acknowledge that our financial blessing in America, in your life, is a gift from God. It's a gift from God. And I know most of you right now, you're Jeff, I don't feel rich. And I know you don't. You know how I know that? I just showed you this video with Craig Groeschel talking about the, the stats and you're, I, you're in the top 4% areas of the world and in our area, probably 2 to 3% most of us average. But afterwards, you didn't go, whoa! I mean, like, you know, when you win the lottery, somebody wins the lottery, you're like, yeah! And you, you guys didn't go, well, I came into this church thinking I was poor this morning. I'm leaving rich! You know, you didn't feel that way. Because we, we don't feel it. We don't feel rich. Why is that? Well, we want to see why that is, because it keeps us from being really good at being rich, understanding God's blessings in our life. You know, let me show you how rich we are. Not only does only 3% of the world have a, ha uh, a car, a lot of the world uh, does not have a house. But most of us are so rich that we have a house for our car. <laughs> it's called a garage, right? Uh, and most of us have a change of clothes. I've been in many nations where... People don't have a change of clothes, let alone a house. And if they have a house, it's just a little shack, half the size of our garage, and you know, six, eight people living in it. My daughter's in a place right now in the Philippines. There's eight people living in a place smaller than our garage, uh, half of the size of our garage, and they feel like they're wealthy in their nation. They're in a place uh, living on a dump where they, they go out and scrounge every day. And she, they feel like they're wealthy. We're, we're so rich. As Americans, we, we drive down the road, and most of us will do this at some point this weekend. We drive down the road, and we pull in buildings that are called restaurants. And we actually pay people to fix our food for us. Isn't that amazing? I and mean, we don't even have to grow it or kill it, and we get our food. It's, we're rich. That's a rich per person's way of living. Most of the world doesn't live like that. We're so rich that we build little, some of you, bigger than homes around the world, closets, houses for our clothes, right? And ladies, let's be honest, some of you have, your, your house for your clothes is two stories, right? You got two decks. And here's, here's the real rich woman's mentality. She, she's getting ready to go on a date with her husband or her boyfriend. She stands in the closet and she says, 
I have. Yeah. While her husband is down in his car that only 3% of the world has in the house that's built for the car, waiting on her. And then she looks at her shoes, you know, and she's, she, I mean, ladies, how many shoes do we need, right, guys? Shoes, shoes, and more shoes. I don't feel rich, though. Why don't I feel rich? We don't feel rich because we compare and we consume. You see, if you ask me, Jeffrey, you're rich, I'm going, well, no. I have a lot of friends who make, you know, five times what I make. Easy. I'm a pastor. I've got, I, I compare myself to those on the news, like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett. I compare. But that's kind of what we're doing in this series. Most of the world compares themselves to us. You top 3% earners in the world. They're looking at us. And we consume. We say, oh, I need more. Oh, those clothes are out of fashion this year. I got to get new. That, that car has so many miles on it. It, it still runs fine, but I, I got to have a new one. Got to consume, consume, consume. And so we don't feel rich because we are always comparing and consuming. And that is not how to be rich. That is how to be selfish. I want to learn how to be rich in a way that honors God. I want us to be rich in a way that it gives God glory. There's a responsibility with, with, with that. Now, I want to show you how rich we are, okay? I want to show you how rich we are. This will blow your mind here. Look at this. Everybody see it? What is it? Two, two dollars. For those of you who make sure on the internet, you guys can see it. Two bucks. Okay, I want you to see how rich I am. See how rich you are. See that? Here's how rich we are. Nobody came up here to get that two bucks when I threw it away. 50% of the world's population, one out of every two people, will work all day today for $2. That's their wage. Now, if you weren't all Americans, I'd be able to stand up here and point, you, not you, you, not you. One out of every two would be working for that much money. Our, one of our campus pastors, Jason, just got back from Haiti. They are working today in Haiti for $2.50 a day. And they feel blessed if they have a job that they can do that in. I feel pretty rich right now, don't you? I, I, it's so funny. We're so rich. I came back last night, a half hour later, to get my computer and kind of log off. And my $2 was still laying here. I said, man, we're, I'm so rich. I forgot about it. You're so rich. Nobody even picked it up. It's amazing. Now, again... Don't feel, this is not about guilty. That's not what this is all about. It's, about. it's about blessing and learning how to walk in the blessing God has for us. For instance, you know, people come up to me all the time and say, Jeff, you are blessed. You have a great wife, a great marriage. And I'm like, yes, I thank God for that. I'm so excited. He has, he's blessed me. Same with my kids. And I say, yes, he's blessed me. And when people come up to us and say, man, you're blessed. You have a house. You have a car. Financially, you're blessed. We go, well, not, you know, we're not rich or anything. Instead of saying, yes, God has blessed us, and we want to be faithful to this. We want to be responsible. We want to give him glory for what he's done in our lives. Now, put it in your notes. God has blessed me with more than I need. I'm rich. Would everybody say that? God has blessed me with more than I need. I'm rich. One more time, with enthusiasm. God has blessed me with more than I need. I'm rich. I told you, it's good news, bad news. Are you ready for the bad news? Bad news is you're rich. The good news is you're rich, but the bad news is you're rich. Why is that bad news? Let me show you why. Jesus had an encounter with the rich guy. And here's what he said, Luke 18. When Jesus saw this, he said, how hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? Now, I read this verse and I always skip right over and I'm going, well, thank goodness that's not me. And I'm learning now, I'm looking at the world's population going, oh, that's us. How hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? In fact, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle then a rich person entered the kingdom of heaven. He compares, he says, try to get a camel through the eye of a sewing needle. That's how hard it is for a rich person to get into heaven. The disciples said, well, how does a rich man get into heaven? He goes, well, what's impossible with man is possible with God. We fall into this category now as Americans. So there are a few things we need to do. And I'm going to challenge you over these few weeks to live this out. This verse, these verses challenge us. Because you're rich... 
You must, number one, work harder at depending on God. You see, most of us don't have to pray the way Jesus told us to pray. He said, pray this, give us today our daily bread. Most of the world is literally praying, God, our family won't eat today unless you provide for us. For most of us, we're going to either go to a restaurant today or our food is already in our cupboards. In fact, a lot of us have food for the week already in our cupboards. And if it's not there, we're not worried about it. We're going to the store to get it. They really understand. I've been in countries where they understand they've got to trust in God for daily bread. We are blessed financially. Because of that, though, we have to work harder at depending on God. Number two, continue to focus on the right priorities. Everybody say right priorities. priorities. See, the truth is money allows us to make choices. Most of you can make the choice. Am I going to go to church or go to some other event? Uh, Am I going to take the summer off and go vacation all summer? Or I'm going to keep my family in worship and and focused on God. Uh, A lot of us during our favorite sporting seasons, we say, well, we'll take that time off. Where most of the world says, hey, Somebody, somebody's teaching, preaching, uh, there's church going on, that's the best deal in town, let's go, we can't go anywhere else. You know, I mean, it's easy to get a crowd in most of the world, but for us, we have choices. Kathy and I always have teased about this, um, how rich people die different deaths than most of us. Uh, what, what I mean by that is, you know, I, I've seen families who, they crashed their private plane, and that's how they died, you know, and it's like, well, when's my cr- plane, I'll never crash my private plane, you know what I mean? Because we, we can't, or people die doing all these exotic traveling. And, and the truth is, compared to most of the world, we're the same way. You know, we'll have car wrecks or whatever. They don't have those kind of deaths. We have choices of our priorities. What's my priority going to be? And I have to, we have to work at this because we have a choice, as opposed to living in poverty and having no choices. Now, by the way, I am not celebrating poverty. The Bible doesn't do that either. What the Bible says is, be responsible with your riches. Okay. God has blessed us. Uh, been to countries where you know, people just have no, no floors, no running water, uh, and, and they're crammed into these rooms. And it's amazing to see how they are so focused on God. I've been in those countries where I've thought, oh, I love the hunger for God here. And knowing that I've got to go back to Tucson, to America, where I'm going to get on I-10 and I'm going to get right back in the stress and the rat race. And I love where God has put me, but it's like, I wish I had that simple trust that they have. I have to work at that. Third thing, understand you have a responsibility. Everybody say, I have a responsibility. Do you think God made us rich to consume it all? No, that's good at being selfish. For most of us, God has blessed us so much. And because of that, far more is expected of us. Now, some of you right now, you're going, well, wait a minute, Jeff. I just work. I'm I'm young. I only work by the hour. I get minimum wage. Again, you have to see in the world's population, that's why they're trying to get to America. They would love to work for minimum wage. And far more is expected of us. Now, even as I've been talking about this, I've been asking people for three weeks, are you rich? Nobody has said yes. And I get that. I've had those conversations with my kids, you know, and I, I, they say, are we rich, Dad? I'm like, no. So as I've been going through this, I'm like, okay, I, I got to talk to you guys. I've kind of discovered as I'm doing this Bible study that we're rich. But here's my feelings. I go, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> Especially don't tell your friends or anybody at church. You know what I mean? We don't want to say I'm rich. And I get that. But I'm having to walk this through in my life because I realize there's a responsibility because I'm a rich American compared to the rest of the world. Now, I'm not talking about the prosperity gospel. Some of you have heard that theology and you say, oh, is that what you're talking about, Jeff? And it's the kind of gospel where, you know, hey, if you give God a hundred bucks, he'll give you a thousand back. Or, you know, if you want a BMW, you just pray for it and you'll get it. I'm going to tell you something that's not biblical. I think it's stupid. I don't believe in it. I'm talking about the real prosperity gospel. And that is God has already prospered us. He has prospered us. God has blessed me with more than I need. I'm rich. Say that with me again. God has blessed me with more than I need. I'm rich. So I asked you, what uh, what does it take financially to make in a year to feel rich? I can relate to that video. I remember, man, Kathy, if we could just make 22,000 a year, we'd be rich, you know, and then we had kids. Somebody said, if I could make more than minimum wage, I'd feel rich. I understand that. Enough to pay for my wife's needs. Depends on how big her closet and her shoe collection is, don't you think? 
Uh, somebody from this campus says, it isn't always about money. It's about spiritual richness. Money is a tool to live out life in Christ. If you're happy, that's true. But this series is about money. These verses are about money. Paul specifically, I'm telling you, I tried to get out of that and say, hey, I'm rich in all other ways. But Paul's saying to those who are rich financially in this world. So that's what this series is, okay? Um, being rich is being with where God wants you. I love that. You're happy with your work. Somebody else says, I want to be a billionaire so bad. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So we have the extreme even right here among us. Somebody's just get me more than minimum wage. Somebody else wants to be a billionaire. God's blessed me with more than I need. I'm rich. Now I'm going to close in prayer in just a moment and challenge you with some things. But before I do, I'm going to dedicate a baby. Yeah. I'm going to ask those of you on our... Um, Online campuses and those of you over at Twin Peaks to stay with us. This is family stuff, and we want to do this on all of our campuses. I've known uh, this guy for a long time. He grew up with my uh, older daughters. I think uh, you got, I think I met you when you were five or six years old, four or five. Yeah, five years old. Yeah, I've watched you go through all your stages. I never thought you'd be responsible enough to be married and have a kid. <laughs> Neither did I. Neither no. did I. <laughs> This is David and Laura. Uh, Tony and Chrissy, did you want to come up and stand with them? or These guys, come on up. Whoever family wants to come up. I'll go ahead. And... This is Mason. And uh, their, their son Mason. How old is Mason now, guys? Five months. Five months. You guys, it's so great. I'm honored to be able to do this. Now, folks. Oh, hey, look at that. Get him started right, man. Ah. <laughs> can, I, can I hold Mason? Uh -huh. oh. oh, yeah, practicing the grandpa thing. Ooh. Okay, here's, here's the deal, guys. You got to do this like the Lion King. <laughs> I just... Uh... <laughs> so Tony and Chrissy, uh, they've been wonderful friends of Kathy and myself over the years. Tony's one of our board of trustees. And uh, I, I was just so thrilled that he became a grandpa before I did. And now I'm jealous. I'm ready. Um, when we dedicate a baby uh, around here, what we're saying, the parents are saying, we want to raise them in the ways of God. In fact, I have a letter that David and uh, Laura wrote. To this. I write a letter to everybody, all the kids I dedicate and uh, tell them to open it when they're 18. And they, did, they wrote a letter too. And I highlight just a few things here. Here's what they said. They said, we pray the knowledge and wisdom, be able to bring for knowledge and wisdom to bring you up in a well-rounded and successful life talking about that's what they're praying for themselves. And then they wrote in here about how they're praying for him to just grow up in the ways of God. It says no matter what, oh yeah. Uh, talking about how no matter what happens in life, it's okay, I've been slobbered on before, David. <laughs> I just don't want your slobber on me. Uh, talking about how they want to raise him up to follow the ways of Christ. You trying to slobber on me? Guys, so they're, they're saying that they are going to dedicate and commit to raising him in the ways of Christ. Well, you really slobbered on me that time, buddy. And here's what we are saying to you guys. We are committed to helping you in any way we can as a church through children's ministry. And I know you guys live out of town now, but we are committed to that. And I know there are other churches that will do that. Tony and Chrissy, his grandparents, I get to see this guy a lot. And we are committed to helping you to do that. That's why we do children's ministry, church. Are you committed to helping parents like David and Laura raise their kids in the ways of Christ, the life church? If you are, say, I do. I okay. You guys, you're committing today to dedicate this little guy to the Lord, and you're saying that I'm committed to raising him in the ways of Christ. If you do, say, I do. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for this little guy. What a blessing he is. Your word says children are a blessing from you. We commit Mason into your life right now. I pray for wisdom for David and Laura, Christy and Tony, grandparents, Lord. Your word says that you have plans for him. You knit him together in, your mother, in his mother's womb, Psalm 139. This is his uh, verse that they've given for him, Lord. You counted his days before they come to pass. Let his life be for your glory and your honor. Protect him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What a cute kid, huh? Love it. Mwah. I love the smell of a baby's head. Wish my head could smell like that. Isn't that funny? When we get older, it smells worse, but a baby smells good. He liked me. So I'm, I'm going to close some prayer here, but one of the things we do is we dedicate. Thank you guys so much. 
as we dedicate babies. Yeah. Uh, our children's pastor here. Uh, we, we have uh, the first Bible and several other things we give them, the letter. And uh, it's really important for us. And it's important for us as a church to partner together with you young families to help you raise your kids in the ways of God in any way we can. That's what we're about. So let's close in prayer. I want to encourage you. Take out your connection card. There's a couple steps I'm going to ask you to commit to this week. One of them is to go to a website that's in the notes uh, to really do kind of a personal check and say, where do I really rank in the world? I'm going to ask you to do that this week. Several people have already done it, and they were just amazed to see how we fit into the world. So check that out. I want to really ask you, if you've never been to Financial Peace University, it's all about how to live debt-free and to be faithful and be good stewards of the resources that managers, the resources God's given us. We have one of those classes coming up, and if you say, Jeff, I need to do that, that's your next step. Another thing I want to ask you to commit to is stick with me through these four weeks because God wants to teach you how to be rich. And I totally get it when you're saying, oh, this, kind of, this topic makes me nervous. I get it. I, I wanted to skip these verses. I fought God on even doing this series. But I know that God has blessed us as Americans, and, and we have a responsibility. We want to be faithful with what God's given us, and we want to be rich in a way that honors him. Father, in Jesus' name, change our lives. As we start this series, Lord, you know in my own heart how I've wrestled with this. Change our lives. Change my life. Let it begin with me. God, I've always looked at myself as fitting into the poor because I compare myself to the super rich of America or the world. And we consume. Lord, you spoke some words to us. You've blessed us. We live here in America. We are part of the richest nation in the world. God, would you help us to learn how to be rich in a way that honors you. If you've never made the decision to follow Christ, that's the richest blessing you could ever have. That's where it starts, and you can do that today. Just invite him and say, Lord Jesus, I want to invite you into my life. I want to begin to follow you. I want the freedom from the guilt and sins of my past. I want your presence in my life. I want to learn how to live in the blessings that you have given me right here in America and in my life in a way that honors you. Lord, I pray for those folks who are making that decision right now. Let them begin that journey with you. For the rest of us, God, let this be life-changing that we would learn how to be responsible with what you've given us so that we can honor you with riches. In Jesus' name.